The payload capacity of a robot is generally considered to be constant throughout its workspace. But we know intuitively that a robot can't lift as much when it's in a horizontal configuration because there's more gravity to work with. In fact, it largely depends on velocity and acceleration. So the proposed method designs trajectories that harness the dynamics of the manipulator to increase its capacity. Now, in order to test the method, we've applied it to this RR planar mechanism. Now we've chosen some deliberately weak motors. In fact, the robot is not even able to hold itself horizontally with no load. So given a specific task, the method optimizes a smooth trajectory that allows the robot to perform a task that it normally would not be able to do. Now let's see an example of that. In this example, we can plot the theoretical torques. We have one for each joint and we see that they remain within certain bounds. So the job of the method was to find a trajectory that performs the task and for which the torques remain within these bounds. And this is what it found. So let's see how this compares to what the robot does. We see that the robot uses more torque than what the model predicted. In fact, there's about a 50% overshoot. Now this is mainly due to the controller reacting to small position errors. But if we limit the maximum torque that the robot can use, we can check whether or not the robot is still able to perform the task. So with a limit of 30% overshoot, here's the robot performing the same trajectory. Unsurprisingly, the limits are sometimes active, which results in some saturation of the torque. But the robot does perform the task. Now since 30% is relatively modest, let's try limiting the torque to just 5% overshoot. Quite a bit of saturation this time, but again, the task is completed. Now, in order to truly see the performance, we have to look at the position errors. To keep the image clean, we only look at the first joint. We can observe that as the limits become more restrictive, the position errors increase. This means that there's a certain trade-off between the limits imposed and the maximum error tolerable. Now, one interesting detail to note is that while the error can be large during some parts of the motion, it does tend to get much smaller towards the end. Since the path to be followed is not predetermined, but rather determined by the method, the error along the path is not that relevant. The main objective is to minimize the error at the endpoint. Next, let's determine how much mass the robot can lift. Remember, it can't even hold itself horizontally in static mode. Now in the paper, we define 10 tasks, and the most mass that the robot was able to lift for all 10 tasks is 50 grams. So let's see the robot performing those. Now this robot has a mass of about 250 grams, including this motor here. So when we add 50 grams, that's about 20% additional mass added to the end effector. Now for certain tasks, we were able to lift up to 150 grams, or 60% additional mass added at the end effector. Now without optimizing the trajectory, we see that the robot clearly can't lift the mass. But now, using the trajectory provided by the proposed method, the robot is able to lift the mass. Thanks for watching and enjoy the paper.